Find the remains of my expedition and you will have your proof. Tenzin will guide you. One of the advantages of uh, having actors who do both the voice and the physical performance on the stage is that you get this unique energy when actors interact with each other that you just don't get when you record everybody separately in a sound booth. Hello. Oh! Whew. So much for foreplay. We allow a certain degree of uh, improvisation among the actors. You know, we have the script. They're never necessarily set in stone. If we come up with something better on the day of the shoot, or if uh, one of our actors comes up with a funny ad lib that works, you know, we use it. And you, if you record everything beforehand with completely different people, you'll never get that. Great, right, I love that. The actors and the director, uh, the motion capture director, really kind of treat their sequences like like miniature plays, and they they block them as if you know they're performing in front of a live audience, you know, but because there is no real camera there, there's you know uh, virtual cameras all over the place. Oh, a girl can hit harder than that. <laughs> We work from an outline that we created at the beginning of the project. We flesh out the script and we work on the scenes as we go. And then when we get into the studio, we have a rehearsal day with the actors. We revise the material together, we get it up on its feet, and we block it as if we were shooting film. Then the next day we get together and uh, shoot it for real with the full crew there and the mocap suits and everything. Um, and even then we revise them on, on its feet. So it's, it's a really different process that most video games use. We split, the take we split the take three ways, then you and I disappear together. There's been a lot of instances where you have studios who record the voices separately from the mocap, and the end result almost always looks, at best, looks like pantomime, and at worst, looks like people running around flailing their arms. Let's not forget who walked out on who. The nice thing about motion capture is, unlike a live-action shoot where you know, if one person is okay in one take but the other person isn't, you're kind of having to choose between one or the other. I can choose anybody's take from any performance at any time so that we can always get the best possible result. The reason we are actually trying to capture the audio on the stage is because that's basically when the actor's in the moment and they're giving their best performance and it just feels a lot better than when we ADR it. Often that feels, you know, kind of canned. You are the reporter who has been biting at my heels. You better pray that he is not bluffing. When I really get involved is really on the day of mocap shooting. So uh, I'm there on the stage as we're recording the scenes, shooting the scenes with the actors, and I'm listening for continuity bet between takes. I'm listening for the right emotional tone between the actors. I'm listening for noise. I'm listening for all kinds of pollution uh, in the sound. And uh, we do a bunch of takes. I'm paying attention to it from the, sort of the, the holistic overview of uh, how the performance fits into the larger story, into the script as a whole. I'm listening for the writing, whether it's working, whether what's on the page is coming out on the stage. I place the cameras where I think I'm going to get the best, most effective performances out of everybody, best establishing shots, best close-ups. And when the scene calls for it, uh, especially in the more action-oriented scenes, we always try to add a, a bit of a, a handheld feel to the whole thing as well. Once uh, Josh has decided which takes and which masters and all the, the time codes of the motion capture that he's going to order, I'll stitch it together. We, you know, he gives me the leeway to make the timing feel good. It feels energetic. Um, then I go through all of the takes that we've recorded on the stage, not just the ones that we've selected. I'll make my best cut out of all that dialogue. Now, come on, I'm through playing the hero. Your adversary will not give up so easily. He will not stop until he possesses the thing he desires. The actors give us such great material on the stage, and we, when we come in, uh, we have to complete that performance and make these characters really alive and, and who they are. That usually starts off with looking at what the characters are touching and what prop manipulations and, and how they interact with each other. And, um, and it goes all the way up to all the fine details of you know, how their fingers and hands are are held and what their faces, uh, the, the expressions and 
and tone and emotion of their face. It's not just the lip sync, it's, it's, the, it's the whole performance. It's what they're doing when they're not speaking as well. So when we get that, that performance into our computers and we, we can look at it from any direction, it's at that point we need to set up our camera rigs. We need to you know, decide where our shots are gonna be from, what's gonna be a close up, what's gonna be a wide or medium shot, you know, what's gonna have a wide angle or a long lens. You know? So we get, to, we get to start that once the performance is already in. You know, we, we like to do a lighting study, what we call a lighting study, and look at the action, look at the location, understand the story point, really look at the subtle, subtle motion, the interaction of the characters, try to pick you know, some real you know, hero frames, some, some key points, some key frames in that story point, you know, in those scenes, and really light those to really bring the action to life. We start to move lights around in real time in the game. So we can you know, grab a hold of the sunlight and move it around and, and see, oh yeah, that, that angle of lighting really works nice on the character and it, it really brings out the right emotion, you know, so we get the right angle, marry that with the right color, now we, we, we've got a compelling shot developing. My relationship with Flynn is strictly professional. Really? Mostly professional. Oh. Often for the sounds in Uncharted 2, we will um, go out and actually do field recording. We've done that with a lot of the environment stuff. Uh, we also, um, you know, uh, record a whole lot of Foley as well. So, uh, because we have all the characters that we have to cover and their, their movesets are really, uh, you know, pretty extensive. Well, since our goal is to make sure that this sort of cinematic experience that we're providing, both interactively and in terms of the, the, the pre-rendered cutscenes, is as seamless as possible, we wanted to make sure everything happened within the same, same rendering engine, which is our game rendering engine. It's awesome. I mean, it's just, it's amazing because, you know, you can play the game, segue right into the cinematic, use the game engine to light these cinematics, bring them to life, and just make it really, really immersive, you know, using the game engine. Just one goes into the other and out, and so continuity is just, it's just there. Because we have the, the, the same assets that you're looking at in game and in the movie, we get that seamless cinematic experience. It's, it's really, really unique. I suppose I should have quit while I was ahead. It's not just about the visceral thrill of what you're doing, it's about the emotional and the visceral thrill, and that's where having it be a character-driven story is so important. And it's great fun for the player to, to, to experience, and I, I look forward to it. It's, it's a lot of fun.